guys, my name's Ira Taz. This is Doug, my 2017 Classic 500. And today, I'm gonna just swap the map that's contained in the Powertronic. Last time I took Doug for a ride, I took him out onto the highway, and with the pod filters, I found at really high revs, and at the higher end of the speed range that Doug is capable of, uh, he was just leaning out and stuttering slightly. So I emailed Powertronic, and within a couple of hours, they sent me back a map as an R2 file to upload to my Powertronic unit that they would recommend for the lists of modifications that I gave them. So this is a pretty easy task. We've just got to get to the Powertronic and then use Rtune the Powertronic or Race Dynamic uh, interface to put the map that they sent me onto the unit. Let's uh, give it a crack. So I've put the Powertronic unit in here. That's the map switch. And we're gonna put it onto map one because I know that map two works and so I can use it as a backup if need be. This is the USB cable supplied. And we connect it to the unit. Okay, so you can see red is power and the combination of flashing there indicates that we are on map one. So we go to Archune itself. Click connect. And hit receive, which allows it to interact with the bike in real time. So we're up here, active map one. If you plug in the map switch, that will change to active map two. Fuel one, ignition one, this is map one that's loaded. Fuel two, ignition two is the second map. So you can see if you just look at this column, the two maps have different fueling that's been set. So we go file, open, And this is the map they sent me, Royal Enfield Classic 500, open. Then we just hit burn. Proceed. Status burning. So that's permanently setting it onto that. You can interface with the bike and change those values by just hitting send and receive and it won't change anything permanently unless you hit burn. You can even lock that map to the ECU by hitting lock and burn which personally I won't do at the moment. The next thing we have to do is just recalibrate the th throttle position. So put the bike just with power. Go to configuration, throttle position, because these are changeable. Throttle position, auto calibrate. So it doesn't actually need to be running to do this. Rotate throttle to full open. One, two. 
So that's just telling the ECU where zero, where's a hundred percent. And then we click OK. And then we hit burn. Proceed. And realistically, that is all there is to changing the map. While we're here, you can alter these. Uh, you can take it to a dyno or rolling road and tune the bike while it's running. But let's fire it up. Starts easily. Settles into idle almost instantly. You can hear the induction noise, and that's because I've got the pod filters on it. Got power, it's running map one. So this is the fueling for map two. That was a little lean at the upper rev range. This is our new map. see here this is what the stock ECU is doing and this is the percentage of change that the piggyback ECU is doing. So it's trimming the fuel, adding more, taking less out compared to stock, overstock. Because a lot of it's done on percentage throttle versus rev, that's why we had to recalibrate the throttle position sensor and ultimately that's a lot of all there is to it. We might put our gear on, take it out and road test it. I'll be right back with you. So when I took Doug out on the highway, just right up in the high rev, top end, With the pod filters, I found he was just starting to stutter a little bit. I assumed that it was just running a little bit lean, just in that higher rev zone. Which is not great for the longevity of the bike. And it just wouldn't let me run out right up to the maximum speed. So I emailed the service centre, the tech support. At Powertronic, Race Dynamics. And within a couple of hours they got back to me. I listed the mods I'd done to Doug. And they emailed me what they believed would be the best map for Doug with those modifications and as you saw five minute job to install the map as the downloaded R2 file to the Powertronic unit via the laptop and here we are out on the road testing it and you saw me pretty effortlessly overtake that car. Run down that road at 120. The bike feels different right from start up. It sounded different. And on the road it feels different. It's taken that slight hesitation out in the top end of the rev range which isn't the top end of the power range on this bike but because it's got a fairly low rev limiter you do find yourself up at the top end of the rev range a little bit on the highway. The other thing 
something that's already also very obvious. There's a lot less popping on diesel. It's an aftermarket AEW Gold Star exhaust. It's free flowing. It's always going to pop a little bit. Yeah, right through the rev range. It accelerates better. Throttle response is good. Roll on. Good. Change up to fifth. sounds different, it just sounds lower pitch or menacing the support at Powertronic. And it's this flexibility in tuning that makes this device worth worthwhile. Some of the comments that I've gotten on the Powertronic videos suggest that people don't fully understand what this piggyback ECU does and is used for. It's not just about $400 for a two horsepower gain and a couple of foot pounds of torque. It's this adjustability that allows you to tune your bike very individually, even using a dyno if you need to the specific modifications, attitude, fuel, etc, etc, etc that you've done to your end field. And that makes it, in my opinion, absolutely worth the money. It is an expensive upgrade in the scheme of things. So again, it's probably not for everyone. 
everyone. But in my opinion, it's worth every cent. And Doug runs amazingly well off the back of the piggyback ECU and the tunability you get. Thanks for the guys at Powertronic for getting on my request so quickly and providing me with such an accurate map. So guys, as I cruise through the Gog Range, enjoying the first day without rain for a long time, I know it's alright Taz, I'll see you next time. Guys, I'm out.